I would throw these out into the crowd, but I don't want to hurt anyone. But if you want some flair, you are welcome to it. Good evening and welcome, everyone. I'm so, so glad that you're all here. Raise your hand if it's your first time at the library. <gasps> welcome. We're so, so glad. Um, so as you saw up here, we are the queerest library ever, folks. My name is Christina Mitra, she, her, ella, and I'm the program manager for the Hormel LGBTQIA Center. We are truly the queerest library ever because we were the very first and remain the only LGBTQIA center in any urban public library in the world. Now, I hope one day that we have many centers everywhere, not only in urban big cities, but in small towns, because we know we need that everywhere. So I know you all feel me in wanting that for our community. Um, so I just want to let you to know that we are your library. So we are a public library. We're open to all. So if you have ideas about exhibits, events, queer and trans books that you would love to see in our collections, archival materials that you think that would be wonderful to have in our collections, please talk to me. I am so willing and open to talk with you all. Before we start, I want to offer an, a land acknowledgement. The San Francisco Public Library acknowledges that we occupy the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatush Ohlone peoples, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. We recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. As uninvited guests, we affirm their sovereign rights as first peoples and wish to pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatush community. So I am so thrilled that you're all here on this Thursday night to honor the legendary Club Q dance party. Raise your hand if you were at that party, folks. <laughs> When Tania Lunsford Lings, curator of tonight's program, reached out to me in January of this year about her idea for this after being an artist in residence here at the library and learning about Chloe Atkins' incredible collection. Folks, there's 25,000 plus of Chloe's photos in our queer archives. I knew that it was an instant yes. I am a queer woman of color, born and raised here in San Francisco. I was a teenager in the 90s, so unfortunately I did not have the chance to experience Club Q myself. But that's why I'm here with you all, vicariously living through this incredible experience that I know you had. And we stand on your shoulders, and we stand on the shoulders of the incredible women that made this party what it is, and we celebrate you. And we're just so, so happy with that. They're here with us, we're here with you, and we get to enjoy this together. Before we continue, just a few thank yous. I want to thank the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library. They're the nonprofit organization that raises funds for us to be able to put on amazing programming like this, so I want to thank them. And thank you to our media services team. They are here behind the scenes making sure that everything is going smoothly with sound, video, thank you. And our custodial team for making sure that our tables are out in front and our box office has tables and seats to sit in. Thank you so much. And of course, we thank Queer Cultural Center. This is a partnership tonight with the National Queer Arts Festival. I am so excited. As a previous artist with Still Here San Francisco, Woo! I love the Queer Cultural Center. I love the National Queer Arts Festival, and I love that my worlds are coming together tonight. So without further ado, I welcome the Executive Director of the Queer Cultural Center, Anand. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anand Kalra. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a trans guy. I like to say that so people don't get confused later. Um, and I, um, as Christina said, I am the Executive Director of Queer Cultural Center, um, standing on the shoulders of people who've come before me. How many people know Pam Peniston? Ooh. Yes! Pam Peniston, how many people know Natalia Valley of the Heels? Hey. 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 Yes. So I'm very proud and very honored to um, have taken the reins last September. I'm very proud of our staff, so grateful to be here. I'm not going to say a lot of words. I'm just here to say thank you to um, the people on our side, to uh, San Francisco Public Library, to Tania Lunsford Links for curating and, um, and putting together this wonderful program, and the after party that's starting at 8 p.m. at Strut at 470 Council. Make this a double header for your evening. 
Um, but really, I just want to say thank you and not take up too much space here. Thank you especially to our box office workers back there, to Nico Starment on video, to the staff. I think we have almost everybody here tonight. To Sara Guerra, who's here, Diana Al Alvarez, Ali Scott, who's working other things tonight. Um, we have five more events in the 26th Annual National Queer Arts Festival, so check out QueerCulturalCenter.org. This weekend is going to go out with a bang. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. And so to continue, and or actually begin, really, our evening together, it's my honor to welcome Rochelle Donegan for a special dedication to set us off right. As you come back to your natural rhythm of breath, we come to this place where we are standing in, with, and for one another. And what I'd like to do is I would like to just honor those who were with us at Club Q and who are no longer here. And I would love to just be a place and a space where we can invite those spirits here also to laugh with us and to enjoy this, this time with us as we remember who we were, who we are, what we did, and what we will continue to do. So just taking a moment to really honor those who everything that it took to create Q, every person that came through the doors, everyone that worked with Paige to create something so beautiful and fantastic, not even knowing what we were doing at all, but doing what we knew brought us joy and brought us into community with one another. And so just honoring every single hand, every single heart, every single breath that it took to create something so wonderful. Just take one more deep breath in. And a long breath. Arts Festival, particularly Ali Smith and Vienna Alvarez, 
Um, I want to thank the Hormel Center and Christina Mitra, our fearless leader at the Hormel Center. Thank you, Christina. Um, I'd love to thank the History Center, uh, specifically Christina Moretta and Tim Wilson, for doing a lot of the archival work. Um, we have our secret weapon with us this evening, Chloe Atkins, who you'll meet later. Um, yes. Uh, I'd also love to thank our partners at Strut, um, where the after party is happening. Don't miss it. Uh, for 70 Castro Street, we finally get a spot on Castro. What's happening tonight? Um, also our AV and photo folks, so Marcella and Nico and Mike and Kenny and all of the folks behind the scenes that are making tonight happen, as well as your babysitters and your caregivers and your partners and all the folks who made it possible for y'all to be here too. Um, and of course, my fantastic collaborators, Rochelle Donegan, Aaron Birch, Paige Hodel, and Chloe Atkins. So y'all probably know them, but I'm going to read their bio so that you can get to know them in a deeper way, um, because they're pretty fantastic. <laughs> Uh, Rochelle has danced across stages and continents for more than 40 years. She's filled with gratitude for the grace that has allowed her to continue to bring forth her gift at 65. I was at her birthday party this year. She dedicates her movement to all of her ancestors whose lives were taken, yet whose spirits fly free. They form every whip of her head, the curve of her back, clap of her hands, and sweep, turn, and pound of her feet. She walks deep in her love and dedication to movement. She's had the great honor of performing in the film Warrior Marks with Alice Walker and Pratipa Palmer. The opening of Erotic City for Prince. Yes! And is presently in two dance companies, the Sarah Bush Dance Project and Dance Brigade. Michelle says, I am dance. She has formed her career dedicated to body, mind, and spirit as one. Yoga and meditation instructor, massage therapist, and life coach. Get you some life coaching from Michelle. I have experienced. My life is coached. Um, she continues to perform and brings her life force and boundless joy to dance. For Michelle, dance is life itself. Welcome, Michelle. Erin Birch has done so many fantastic things. A San Francisco native, Erin earned her BFA in film from the California College of Arts and Crafts in 1991. As an early innovator in queer cinema, hers is a singular voice in film, representing the unique diversity of her upbringing as the biracial daughter of a jazz musician father and trailblazing, self-taught artist mother. From her earliest memories in the epicenter of the Haight-Ashbury Summer of Love to her formative years in the colorful neighborhoods of the Fillmore, Chinatown, and Castro District, Erin brings this vantage point of culture and creativity to her work. Today, an internationally recognized independent filmmaker whose work we're going to witness some of tonight, Erin has also produced, directed, and edited documentaries, short narratives, promotional videos, and so much more. A frequently requested speaker and panelist, Erin recently participated in Interior Lives, a program of the 2023 Sojourner Truth Festival of the Arts at the University of Chicago, which screened two of her early films. One, Dreams of Passion from 1989, set in a dance studio, explores desire, and is acknowledged as one of the first films to feature a kiss shared between two black women. Her following film, yes, because we need to see that, yes. Following film, Spin Cycle from 1989, takes an autobiographical look at Birch's own love affairs and filmatic, uh, filmmaking aspirations. At the historic Club Q, San Francisco's legendary once a month dance party for queer women and their friends, Erin created interactive visuals by layering live performance video with colorful projections and found footage to envelop the space in a multi textured, immersive experience. She has also directed and produced innovative films on the mixed race experience, including My People Are from 2007, which explored youth pride and multiracial heritage. Erin is currently in pre-production on a feature-length documentary exploring the colorful life of her mother, artist Laurel Birch.
For over 40 years, Bay Area native Paige Hodel has been an integral part of the soul of the San Francisco Bay Area music scene. Her phenomenal success as a dance club DJ, a radio mistress, and a club promoter has established her as a world-renowned institution in the music industry. Paige's extraordinary career has always been grounded in two things, a profound love and respect for the fiercest soul music, and a dedication to creating entertainment events that celebrate diversity. This drive and determination were to become a hallmark of her renowned career as a DJ and nightclub promoter. What began as a yearly tradition, throwing her notorious birthday parties, quickly led to a regular DJ booking at Amelia's. Amelia. Uh, <laughs> a popular Bay Area dance club at the time. <laughs> it was during this time that her career as a dish jockey took flight, following with bookings at the Oasis, as a resident weekend DJ, and virtually every major dance venue in San Francisco yes. as well, as clubs in New York, Los Angeles, Seattle, and Paris. <laughs> Paris's DJ career has taken her around the globe, including regular bookings in the 90s on Olivia Cruises as a regular yes. <laughs> DJ. One of the reasons that I'm also giggling is I was telling uh, Paige backstage just how much of a fan I am of all of these folks here. And as I was getting ready tonight, I was jamming to a, um, a mix that Paige made that is actually older than I am. <laughs> yep, during the early 80s, Paige became the first female mixer on a major market radio station, mixing the legendary new mix, which is very good, and archived. On okay, so which was followed by a regular spot recording the Live 105 Midday Mix. In addition, she occasionally recorded evening mixes on KML, which are also fantastic. <laughs> With crowds suddenly lining up around the block at every venue, Paige was spinning records. It seemed that once again, the party always followed Paige. In 1987, her nightclub promotion career was born when Paige started the Box and Club Q. <laughs> San Francisco's legendary and longest running dance clubs. She enjoyed an unbelievable 11 year run with the box, creating an unprecedented spirited dance community of gay and straight men and women of all colors, celebrating our beautiful diversity together. In an extraordinary 16 year run with the smash success of Club Q, a once a month dance party for women and friends. Welcome, Paige. <laughs> Some original footage from Club Q. But I just want to say I'm so excited I can hardly stand it. <laughs> this is just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mary Guzman, wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mary. <laughs> Club Q. Yeah, <laughs> um, so uh, this video that you're going to see is about 12 minutes long, and this is a video that I put together in 1988, so it's the, the maybe 89, and then there's a few minutes on the end that is from sometime maybe early 2000s, so just enjoy it, and I made sure to not show these folks so that they can enjoy seeing it after not seeing it for a long time. So I cut it down a little bit, it was very hard, but enjoy, you'll get the flavor of Club Q. <laughs> wow. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you for all of it, Erin. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I was not old enough to get into Club Q, and <laughs> I still get to be a part of it now, so I'm really grateful. Um, would you mind telling us, how did Club Q come to be? What is the story of how Club Q came to be? Is that to anybody? That would be you. <laughs> that must be very clever. That must be me. Um, it was, you know, as with most things in my life, I'm embarrassed to say, or not embarrassed, but proud to say, it was kind of accidental. You know, it was sort of an accidental success. I often step right into things. Uh, but it was magic, you know, and you can feel it 
I mean, I can feel it. We all can feel it when you're standing around magic. And as a DJ, what you do is you watch really pretty girls dance all night. <laughs> it's really bad. It's a hard job. <laughs> So here I was, you know, over the years at Amelia's, even at the Oasis, I was always looking at all those girls at the Oasis. The cocktail waitresses were always in the DJ booth. But anyway, I looked at uh, the dancers and I was always like, no, you need to come dance over here, you need to come dance over here. And I finally kind of figured out that whatever all these nightclub owners are doing, and they're, they're you know, certainly uh, lucrative to the club owners, and us DJs were like, Meh. you know, uh, I said, well, why don't I? do my own party, let's try it. So I uh, got all my friends together, you know, and uh, all the dancers that I had seen at all the clubs. I think the first night, all we really did is put on a black t-shirt with a big pink Q on it. That was the, the uh, job description, <laughs> to be a dancer at Club Q. And, and uh, that night, it, I mean, it, you know, and I had picked all of these dancers from all the different venues, and I mean, literally, the, the, the roof came off. The first venue was Slim's in San Francisco, New York, and uh, the guys that owned the Oasis turned it into a restaurant towards the very end of uh, their run there at the Oasis. And they were like, well, why don't you throw a party in here? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was this really fun, you know, warehousey sort of uh, uh, space, and so very underground vibe, very industrial. And we just built a little stage, and all of the Club Q dancers got up on stage, and I just stood with my mouth open, as, as did everybody. I don't know, was anybody in this room at the first Club Q party at Slim's? Wow. <laughs> so you remember, I mean, we all just stood there going, what was that? I guess it was magic. And, you know, for me, Club Q has been, I'm sort of the camp counselor. I'm not, you know, or I, I always say that I'm the, uh, you guys are the fire and I'm the gasoline. You know, like, I'm, I don't create, I mean, I'm, quite boring during the day, actually. And I live in the middle of the country, and I'm pretty simple. But, put on that music, and I have an eye for, uh, you know, I don't want to say beauty, because I think beauty's kind of a gross word. But there's a tremendous amount, and when I say beauty, I don't mean, you know, Vogue model beauty. I'm talking about that magic that happens when you are in the place doing what you love. And uh, when, when the dancers have ever danced with me, I've always said, you know, well, what should I wear? And I say, just make something that makes you feel amazing. Wear something that makes you feel amazing. So it's been a great honor. I mean, I just have been gathering the kittens all along. <laughs> I'm like the mama kitty, and I'm just gathering all the kitties. And, and you know, literally, it was like a rocket just shot out of the thing, and it was off. Club Q was off. And it started as a garage sale cue that I found at a garage sale for three dollars. There was this big metal cue. You, and I love garage sales, and so anybody who knows me knows me and Gia used to go sailing, we would call it, on Sunday. And I found this three dollar club cue, and I was like, what the hell? I'm got buying that. And everybody thinks that, you know, I really thought a lot about, well, it's cue, it's queer. It's, I mean, it was a three dollar. <laughs> find it. But it was perfect. And then it turned out to be this fabulous letter that kind of changed the world and changed all of our lives. So yeah, it's, it's been a, a, it was, it still is, because I'm still DJing, a magical moment. Okay, thank you, Laura. I mean, Paige, when you talk about it, he's like, oh, I was just a DJ, and I just, you know, got some dancers, and, I mean, you, you had such a vision. You were a vibe master. I mean, it was about, you know, what it felt like. That was important to you, how high the scaffolding was for the dancers, how you were greeted at the door, there would be certain gifts that were given, how the flyers looked. I mean, you, you know, we would be, before the, before the club opened, it would be like, Paige was like, I need this, I need that, and it was, it all came together. When those doors opened, it was magic, and you made that magic happen. We are all players in it, and part of your vision, you know, you were like, I want things on the walls, and I was like, okay, I can do that. You, you know, you want dancers, I want dancers here and here, and Rochelle's like, okay, I got that, but you had the vision. that is true then and is true now is that 
um, Paige is an, an incredible DJ, and the music that she was playing, it wasn't being played right. in other clubs. Um, there were, there, um, it was, you know, soul, funk, Shaka Khan, you know, uh, Steve Moore, those things, they weren't being played in other clubs, and so it was wonderful to, 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 to hear things that really spoke to our, our souls and, um, and, and, and to our, you know, that part too. <laughs> but, and then the, the other thing that you are extraordinary at is joy. You bring this, this, this just, this clear joy and it's infectious. And it, and it just infected us all and, and we brought our joy and about how Club Q came to be. I'm curious at what point y'all were like, we got something here. Like, folks are responding, this is resonating. Was there any one moment or a series of moments where you are like, oh, we have to keep doing this, this is something? I mean, my favorite part of Club Q was always uh, the dancers. For me, watching the dancers, of course, as a DJ, it's a great honor. And I'm like, anybody that knows me, I'm like obsessed with making the dance floor full and keeping it full. And my friend Noel said to me once, you know, when you're DJing Paige, and this, this was kind of what I'm after, that's really what I would hope somebody would say, is that he said, you know, you, you're dancing to a record and you think, shit, I cannot possibly be happier right now. And then the next song would come on and would go, ooh, ooh. And I just, it, it, and, the, and it, was, it, it was deliberate, you know. I, I, I watch you guys, I watch your faces when I mix them. If everybody goes, I don't forget that shit, you know what I mean? And when, the, when you can see on somebody's face, it's just like, ah, oh, you know, like, I love that I'm getting goosebumps right now even saying it, but it's, you know, Tina, you know as a DJ, you watch the crowd, and for some real weird reason, I could remember all the, and I would say, okay, I'm gonna put that one after that one, because that one got a nine, and I'm gonna, put a 10 on top of that, and it would, you know, so it was a deliberate um, build, um, and then it would go, you know, so, sort of, and, and then the Club Q dancers would perform, and it was all kind of choreographed in my mind, but um, uh, I think, you know, we, we, we knew after the first night after, and you can hear, you know, we all feel it when the dancers would dance, and they would do something, and the whole room would cheer, you know, and it was always when you guys were doing something, either you were, kind of going down on each other, or... or <laughs> something in synchronicity. Um, some got more cheers than others. But no, it was, it was you know, clear that we had kind of hit a nerve. And, um, and I felt it, you know, I felt it early on, but you, you know, as you watch Club you kind of and the box too, I mean, I'm not going to talk about the box while I'm here, but the box was extraordinary in the way that it was boys and girls together, and I know you can't say that anymore. Yes. Queer yes. folks, yes. queer folks, yes. everybody yes. together. Yes. Everybody is, when I say that, you all know what I mean. Yes. Those of you who don't know me, I mean everybody together. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, you know, the, it was extraordinary. The, the energy, I mean, it, people would cry. You know, I ran into somebody, I was telling them backstage, that I ran into a guy at um, Cliff's Hardware not long ago. And I was standing in line and the guy tapped me on the shoulder behind me and he goes, are you Paige Hodell? And I was like, okay, I haven't changed that much. But yeah, that's me. And he goes, um, oh my God, I want you. And I started crying. And I started crying. We were like standing in Cliff's crying about the box. And you know, it was something special. And I also said backstage, that I have a couple of times tried to um, not recreate the box, but provide something that would would do something like it. it never worked. It doesn't work. That was a special time. Club Q was very special, and, it, and I I don't I won't I would not be so arrogant to say that nothing has ever been done like it because I don't believe that. I think there's been amazing clubs, but but you know people get sort of warm and fuzzy when they talk about Club Q. 
and Aaron captured it so perfectly. That was just like, I mean, Aaron was a gifted artist. In her artistry, it was a huge part of Club Q and the Bobs. I just want to talk about that a little bit. You know, I went to art school and studied film and video, and I don't even know when. I wasn't at the first queue, it was the second or the third one, and you said, I want to have video up in the club. And so I literally, we had one screens at the Trocadero, and I put the video up, I filmed a dancer, and I put the dancer on the screen. And so you just literally saw the dancer dancing on the screen. And then the next month I thought, we gotta do a little bit more than that. You know, and so I bought this little machine and it made it go doo doo doo. <laughs> and I could divide it into nine squares and I would hit it and do it on the beat. You know, so it would be like doo doo doo. <laughs> it was just like, and then I discovered a, like a color, you know. But it was really like not, it was low, low tech. And then I just kept layering and layering, and then we ended up having it on three walls, and then Paige just would give me tapes and say, what if you played this underneath, and it would be like flowers blooming, and so I put the, superimposed the dancer with the flowers blooming, and maybe cars from the movie Koyama Skatsi going by like this. You know, I mean, it was this, this, this whole explosion, and we would riff together, you know, Paige DJing, and it would be like, okay, I know she's gonna love, she'd be downstairs, and I know she's gonna love this, you know? and it would just happen right on the beat, and it was just, we were making art in the moment, and um, I mean, I'm so, that's how I, actually, it was my job during college, and it was such an amazing, amazing opportunity for me to, to create my art there, and I loved every bit of it, from the beginning of the night, you know, Paige would load in all of her records, and I'd load in all my video equipment, and the dancers would come in with their little outfits. <laughs> Thongs. Actually, you guys had a lot, a lot of outfits. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah, we just came in with our little outfits. <laughs> no, I'm saying you didn't have to carry a lot of stuff. The magic that happened, and what Paige just said is, are you? We've known each other a really long time, so don't get us Your started. Your little outfits. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about you later, okay? <laughs> um, Wait, I lost my train of thought. I must be done. Okay, we'll go.
folks wrote to me. That was a lot to <laughs> so you weren't safe. <laughs> Sit down, we're going to take a quick picture and go ahead and go And um, the, <laughs> yeah, right. dancing and moving. And we're going to talk about Chloe Atkins and her amazing photographs Ooh. later. Yeah. Um, what, the, what, the one I wanted to tie in was that, you know, our, our flyers also told stories and they kind of would tell. And, you know, sometimes the dancers were like, what the fuck is she doing? Like, <laughs> I got really excited about polka dots once. <laughs> and we had a polka dot party. <laughs> do you remember the polka dot party, Mary? Do you remember decorating the polka dots all over that club? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it was so fun. I had to, um, I did get vetoed when I wanted the dancers to wear things that had little polka dots on the end of them. <laughs> no, no, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> no, but we, we, we had so much fun, you know, we, and we, we kind of told a lot of stories with not only the, the shows, but the art, and uh, 
They must join. Most of the time. Um, I'm now going to welcome our secret weapon, Chloe Atkin. Hey. 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 bio, which we wrote collaboratively backstage, and it says, Chloe Atkins is a brilliant photographer. I didn't I, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> studied ceramics as an undergraduate student, but when she moved to San Francisco in 1987, her specific magic became noticed and undeniable as the photographer of Club Q. She makes people feel seen and captures folks in their full glory. Her Club Q photos and other archival photos live here in the Hormel Center at the library. black and white for her posters 
and to do flyers and everything. But then she'd have me shoot a second camera body of um, color slides. And then we'd project them up around inside the nightclub and everybody would be dancing and looking and be like, oh, there's a picture of me. And they'd run back up and get their picture taken again. <laughs> and and these, you know, these pictures, how tall were they? They were like, this, they were like eight, ten, ten feet, feet tall. tall. They were ten feet tall. They were big. Yeah. In the club. So yeah. you would see, suddenly you would see an image of yourself that was ten feet tall. But not just any image. I threw out all the bad <laughs> well, the other thing that was extraordinary about Chloe's photographs and your system of organizing it, and uh, on a less uh, cheerful note, you know, as we all remember, the Club Q in the Box occurred during the AIDS epidemic, kind of right smack dab in the center of it. And I cannot tell you how many times, because everybody knew that when you came to the Box or Club Q, you, we had a really good photograph of you. You know, it wasn't just a snapshot in the you know, backstage, you know, drinking a beer. It was like a studio photograph by a very, very uh, talented photographer. Oh, thank you. And I would get contacted all the time by families of gay men who had passed, saying, we understand you might have a really good picture of my son. And I called Chloe, I'm goosebumps everywhere right now, and all those beautiful boys that we lost. But and they would, they're all would pick up. here in the San Francisco History Center. And it's by date, so if you have any idea of who's, what date your person was here, was photographed, then chances are you could find the film and get a print of it, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. There you go. Right on. You know, that's the only one. Center and the History okay. Center also for making well, that happen. Hey, Thank you. Model. You know, and that's the thing is that memory, I don't have a very good memory. Really, I have a bad memory, actually. But the photos bring it back. Like, that's how I remember what. I looked like, what they looked like, what we were doing, what was going on, what it sounded like. I remember it from the photos, really. Okay, that is Roberta Aktenberg, and she loved Club Q. And she wanted to be mayor or something like that, so she came in and danced with everybody and had her picture taken and blah, blah, blah. And that's Gia Josulo. That's a really great picture of her. She lives in Nueva York, okay? So she kind of couldn't make it tonight, but she is a wonderful person and a great friend. And there's Sarah Lamb Patterson. And then on the right is the uh, Club Q dancers, including Brandon. And um, Sarah lives in Vieques, Puerto Rico now, so she couldn't make it. Is it Damia in the back? I don't know. I just don't know. I didn't ask their names. I just got them to sign the model's release. And if anybody didn't sign the model's release, I would notice it and I would throw the film out before I gave it to Paige or Kevin Owen. Because the model's release gave us permission to use the images for anything we wanted in the world, and of course I don't want to use anything like in a bad way or anything. And I just want to have to know what. Go ahead. I just want to lift up Brandon Kane. Yeah, Brandon. Um, she was just one of the most extraordinary dancers. Yeah. Um, she just was. But she has the red lipstick. Here. Yeah, she has the red hair, red lipstick. She's right in the right in the center. She's no longer with us. Yeah. And so when I was talking about, you know. And I know that she's here. I know that she's in the room right now. Um, she, <laughs> I would choreograph something, and you know, and we'd have like, you know, we'd have a movement where the, the, you know, the kick was here. Brandon's kick was always like up here. <laughs> oh my God. And I would have to like tell him like, Brandon, it doesn't look better. It just looks like you're out of of you're you're, you're not matched with everybody else. So it actually looks worse. But she couldn't help herself. 
Exuberant. Exuberant. She was exuberant. Exuberant. Just, just extremely talented and amazing. And, um, I just and Sarah's outfit is exuberant. Right there on the left. Okay, and then there is oh, Karen. Oh, and Karen. And Mary. Is that you? That's Mary. That's you. Bravo. Mary Kuzma is in the audience with us tonight, who is a phenomenal filmmaker in a way. way. We'll say huge. And then a huge Karen. part in Club Q. Karen, and then I don't know who's that's Karen's that. giving that stuff. Uh, that's her wife today. Oh, oh it is. is. They've been there's eight and together. There's two right here. Yeah. The, um, uh, the, they met at Club Q. Well, there you go. Oh, Maybe been that been night. <laughs> they've been together for 25 years. Wow. They were at Cliff's Harper last week. 24. Yeah, they were. They were. And I just really like this photo. I don't have their names. I do have the dates, but they're in that bag over there on a piece of paper. It's a good photo. And I just <laughs> like it because it kind of rounds up the um, experience, I think, of dancing there, where you're just like, hot. <laughs> <laughs> or ads or whatever, that everybody's perfect, you know, it's like, like it's all sort of beautiful people, and, and uh, you know, we photographed every single person that walked through the door, and I was really, really, you know, I realized as a promoter and as a producer early on that I had a, the microphone in my hand, quite literally, and that I had an obligation and a responsibility to say something worth value, and to me what was really important to say was that you are all beautiful. Yeah. And you are really beautiful. And we're going to show our real community, a lot of the other clubs, and I certainly wouldn't ever mention any names, but you know, they, you pick out the, 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 even models. I mean, sometimes you're like, that I don't even really know if that's a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a bad thing. I don't care, really. But the truth is, I wanted to show our community and, and who we really are. And I think we did, and it was through Chloe's photos. And they're beautiful. Yes. Everyone. Every single one. I mean, that's the thing is, I love everybody. It's hard not to. Well, everybody loves Chloe. I mean, she's so fun. So we can maybe stick with these, and then I have like a final question, so we have a moment for maybe one or two folks to um, tell a behind-the-scenes story, uh, something that you remember as a pivotal moment or part of Q history. I can't say. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell a, 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 I mean, see, not that. A lot of the times, here it is. No, not that much. No, 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 Rochelle, no. Don't. <laughs> we do a lot of stage shows. And a lot of our, as the years went on, the stage show became more and more interesting and fun. And, you know, we used to use, like, rolls of toilet paper and cardboard to gaffer stage, to make our stage sets. Sharpies, like, you know, whatever we could do. And by the end of it, we were throwing down. And we would show up at you know eleven o'clock in the morning with forty bins with her paints and staple guns, and you know, just so much art supplies and 
We threw down. By the end, we were making banks. See, you know, we had like seven. I mean, we just threw it down. I, the the one that I remember the most, and, the, and um, which was, um, I think, one of our funnest, is when we had a bed on the stage. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the bed on the stage with the curtain in front of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We danced in front of it. Oh, yeah. That? Oh, yeah. It, and, it was, and I remember this to this song, I forget the artist, but the name of the song is Someone's Been Sleeping in My Bed. Yes. You remember that? Oh. I wonder who was on the bed. Uh -oh. Desandra. Desandra was on the bed. And there were just women that would come through in the background on this bed, and then there were five of us dancing in the front, like we didn't know anything that was going on behind us. There was a lot going on on that stage. It was fun. What I love is, is the, the, the storytelling. So we took that story, which was, you know, out in the world as this, you know, very, you know, straight story and made it our own. And, um, and you know, it was a little risque. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. So, you know, the, the whole scene where, you know, your, your person is your wife or, or partner's going off to work. And then, <laughs> and then you kind of watch this, this, you know, one woman after the other. and the hookups and the, just the, all, it was, there was so much joy and fun and a ton of drama. <laughs> we do drama really well. There was, there was also like, um, and the dancers of course know very well what I'm talking about. There were so many times when we would have this beautiful stage set in mind and Mary can probably remember each one of these that we one time for Valentine's Day wanted to make a giant heart-shaped chocolate box and the dancers were inside the box as the chocolates or the candies we say and we couldn't get the fucking thing to move they were all in the box they were in there forever do you remember the, the thing the cover was on there they, they almost died they were like that I bought were too small. I just placed hardware probably. <laughs> they wouldn't turn, they wouldn't push them. So we, we decided that we would pull the curtain back to make it look like it was going out through the curtain. We, had, we made it work. Or there was the time we made a space uh, spaceship. Do you remember? And you guys were all in this cardboard spaceship. And we, we were gonna, you know, like Michael Jackson comes up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where there's like smoke behind it, he's, a, he's a, a silhouette coming out, you know. So we were like, uh, all this smoke billowing out and the dancers were going to come up, but we couldn't get the door open. <laughs> the dancers are like, like these little windows in the spaceship and they're like, <laughs> freaking out because they were like going to... <laughs> they got the door open, it was like, they like fell out. <laughs> That I haven't had legal suits. <laughs> My God, no, we had fun. But Paige, Paige you were also notorious because Paige was not going to start that show until no, no. the right moment, right. right? And so the dancers would be just ready and wait. Okay, it's going to be now. We send all the signals. Okay, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And Paige was like, not yet, not yet, not yet. She was waiting, waiting, waiting. Probably because I was looking for the record. But then, wouldn't I put on the wrong? And half the time? <laughs> Hello? And then we <laughs> put on the wrong song. Then we'd have to wait through the whole song. <laughs> and pray and where are they dancing? The next one right. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm surprised I have any friends. <laughs> I missed to my friends. Well, you're a very good DJ. <laughs>
also plug that we'll be at the after party uh, at Stra tonight. It starts at 8, so there will be much more space for music and dancing and storytelling. There will be food. Um, I want to close out this part of it before we party uh, by asking what are three words that come to mind when you think about the Club Q experience? What it meant to you or what it meant to folks who you're in community with? Three words that come to mind. Freedom, love, community, vibe, <laughs> joy, joy. Oh. <laughs> sexiness. Oh, you can say it together. Booty. 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 <laughs> A lot of booty. Girlfriends. Um, brilliant. Art. Art. Creative. Fun. Fun. That was fun. Is that three? That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> Yeah. 